Hi, I'm Pete Brady, a uh, PhD student at Dartmouth College. My advisor is Sean Smith. And today my work in progress is optimizing data mediation placement with PREO analysis. So let's first take a look at using LangSec to parse legacy programs. We have two ways that we could potentially do this. The perfect way would be to work through the program to capture and parse every input state. We'd certainly get full coverage, but it could be very expensive to retrofit into a legacy program and performance might take a hit. On the other side, we have the good way, which would be just enough input checking to cover the most used input states, balance uh, potential loss of input coverage against the gain of performance, but we could also have a cost performance metric as a guide. As the writer and philosopher Voltaire once said, the best is the enemy of the good, or the perfect is the enemy of the good. So we'll test that by using the just enough model. We'll use some automated data mediation, Pareto analysis, and then a cost performance prediction system to uh, test this out. Here's a block diagram of our data mediation system. At first, we're going to look at this area here at the, uh, the left side of the, uh, of the diagram. The first part of the mediation engine is the data flow graph. We will take the source code in and use LLVM to create a set of intermediate code. This code will be passed to JERN uh, to create a data flow graph. As you can see here, we just have a simple representation of a program with a data flow graph. From this, we will walk through the uh, flow graph, looking at our input variables. In this case, our simple uh, sample here, we have value and print PDF. We find that value is seen in this calc area, starting in calc and then its subordinate routines, while the variable print PDF is only seen in the print routine. So we'll walk through the database and create a linked list of these input data uh, values and how many times they are seen throughout the program. Once we have this information, we can use the data list and the flow graph to optimize the location of our uh, parser validation. So for example, value here, we can decide that we will do our validation at the calc phase, while uh, the print PDF variable we can do at the print phase. So let's get a definition of the Pareto principle. In any population that contributes to a common effect, a relative few of the contributors, known as the vital few, account for the bulk of the effect. And we will see this in the data mediation engine in the next slide. We can now take the counts of our input variables and rank the data in the application in order by the number of times called. So in our little sample, here we have data elements labeled A through H. You can see at D the curve of the cumulative percentage of these data structures, the number of times they were used, uh, has a knee in it. So the four data elements to the left here could be considered the vital few uh, of the uh, uh, Pareto histogram. And from this we can see we get, we're getting about 90% of the uh, uh, coverage of our input variables. Even if we just use A, B, and C, you can see from the graph we'd still get somewhere between 75 and 80 percent of coverage. And we will use the term tau uh, to cover this rank percentage of data to be parsed, where zero is there is no uh, LangSec parsing being done. 100 percent means all the data elements are being covered. So our output from the mediation engine is a description of the data to be parsed and its location in the application. So the location of where we're going to enter the parsing statements. We use a system descriptor language uh, to uh, send to the engine, which is being uh, run by Katai struct, which can convert the description to parser code. One nice thing about Katai is it's uh, cognizant of many different languages. So if the source code is C or Java, etc., we can generate parser code in the appropriate language. 
And from that point, we can use the data that we've collected to merge that into the source code to create the final code. Now that we have a way of inserting Langsec statements into our application, we can do cost performance prediction by varying the levels of tau, that's the levels of the amount of parsing we're going to do by running the mediator multiple times and collect that information by running the application with a fuzzer. We can then collect the speed of operation and the number of errors found. As we collect this data over many different applications, we can build a data set of execution time versus error rate. Uh, the graph here uh, just is a sample uh, data. This doesn't uh, have actual findings. But if we collect enough of this data, the, the execution time, the error rate, and the tau that this was done at, we can then apply a function such as k nearest neighbor to that data to give us a way to build a solver to make these sort of cost performance predictions. We can input an error rate or an execution degradation amount and determine the other values by accessing the data. This would also give us a tau to set in the mediation system for that target application to obtain those values. Now if we do uh, set those values into a new application, we run it uh, at the end, we can see if we get those the, the values we're expecting. If we don't, it would behoove us then to run that application uh, on the full range of TAUs, store that data into our model, and uh, update the model. Currently, we're gathering unmodified and previously Langsec modified applications uh, to test out with this, with this program. We're also currently building the data flow graph creation system, the LLVM GERN connection. And once we start getting data, we do have an initial prediction system running in Python. And so we're just awaiting data now to be able to test that out more thoroughly. In conclusion, we've discussed a procedure that can insert Langsec parsing based on mediation and the most used data structures. We find those most used structures by using Pareto analysis to find a balance between the level of security and performance. Our experiment with real applications should determine if this approach is a viable one. Thank you very much for your time.